This is a constrained layer damper uh, that was put on a machine back in 1996 and the machine had a lot of noise coming out of the back of it. This piece of sheet metal here on the back of the machine is one and a half millimeters thick and that's part of the machine and then this is the piece of plywood I added behind it and then we've had about a two millimeter thick layer of uh, RTV in there. That's what you call a constrained layer damper and the way this works is you've got the thickness of the material then you have the goo then you have another piece. You have a sandwich. There's the constrained layer coming apart. Two millimeter gap is widening up. It's really stuck on there. Constrained layer damper. These are the matrix holes that define the gap. So when the constrained layer damper was built back in 1996, we had all these little screws pushing up here and a matrix on the back. Each one of those was put in here to define what the gap is for the, the goo layer constrained layer damper. So we define this to be about two millimeters sticking up. And so this is one and a half. We had a gap here of about two. This happened to be 18. And so the shear layer in here for vibration control, audio control, we defined it here. And so when we built this, we, what we did is we backed this off, took the screws out. So you can see here this is the goo layer. That looks like it's about the same thickness as the material. It looks like about 60, which would be one and a half. There's some other areas a little bit thicker here. Here's the constrained layer damper we're taking apart. You can see that the RTV we had in there doesn't cover every place, but it was good enough. There's the old constrained layer damper we added on a machine. And I'm taking it apart because it's been scrapped out. I just need this piece of plywood. And this is the damping layer. This is the original panel. This is the plywood. And this is the goo. Add about a two millimeter thick layer of uh, RTV in there. That's what you call a constrained layer damper. And the way this works is you've got the thickness of the material, then you have the goo, then you have another piece. You have a sandwich. And because this is steel, I went ahead and used a thick piece of wood on the side. Now, why don't you just back a side of an envelope calculations it really if I want to make this as stiff as the wood it only has to be about 4.6 millimeters thick and that's just as engineering swag steel has a modulus of 30 million in English units I'm kind of mixing English and metric here but uh, 30 million is the stiffness of steel wood plywood that's kind of a hokey number to find out it's anywhere between a half a million to two million and I just use one million as just a see the envelope calculation so you got a ratio of if you have something that has the same thickness uh, steel is going to be 30 times stiffer than uh, wood just roughly 
and so what I did is I took the one and a half millimeter thickness here of the steel and I divided by how thick the piece would have to be on the side to be the same stiffness over X cubed that because uh, stiffness goes up as the cube of the cross section the moment of inertia here I took the log and there's the log of 30 which is a ratio of the stiffness values so you go through all this take the analogs take the log of 30 divide that by 3 take the analog multiply one and a half anyways one point four point six six say five millimeters so this 18 millimeters is just an overkill and that was just a piece of uh, three fourths inch plywood or something like that I happen to have laying around years ago when this was put in but what's amazing on this to get this apart this sucker was really uh, I've got a bunch of uh, wedges and stuff putting here to pry this apart it's really uh, stuck in there now you may wonder how does RTV work for constrained layer dampening you want something that's got a loss to it uh, but this actually worked really well to cut the uh, cut down the uh, vibration this is a constrained layer damper I'm taking apart the machine has been scrapped out but the machine has a piece of sheet metal on the back and had a lot of vibration from it plus the noise going through it so what we did back in 1996 is I added a piece of plywood in the back separated by a bunch of goo which is uh, actually RTV. And so this is actually one and a half millimeters thick, say 60 thousandths. We had a couple millimeters of RTV. We had some screws we had on top to space this off when we screwed this together. And then we pulled that out when it was dried. So uh, it didn't have any screws in this when it was put together finally, but those were just an aid to assemble this. So we had a defined gap of a couple millimeters of uh, material, RTV, and you really want something with a lot of damping in it. RTV seemed to work fairly well. Uh, I'm sure there's some material that's got a higher loss. You want something that's lossy. So when this panel was moving back and forth, uh, it's got this other piece that's rigid on the side with the goo, and so the energy tends to get dissipated in the layer of goo. It's called constrained layer dampening. And me trying to take this apart is amazing here how well this is stuck together. I've got a bunch of old chisels in here and I'm pounding this together and I'm going to stick a piece of wood in there to separate it because I just wanted this piece of plywood again. And people also use this on speaker design you can, where you've got a piece of wood, some goo, another piece of wood and uh, you get a lot of dampening and makes a good speaker but this machine's being scrapped out that's why it's being taken apart over here there's the thickness of the uh, steel one and a half millimeters and then you let the layer of goo that's the RTV and here's the thickness of the plywood this is actually didn't have to be this thick. I just happened, we happened to have some scrap from another project years ago. If I want to make this piece of wood be the same stiffness as the steel, I went through and just did a back sheet of envelope calculations about 4.66 millimeters here. That's how thick it had to be so that the wood was about the same stiffness as the steel. And the steel, this is metric units, in English units has a stiffness of 30 million, 3 times 10 to the 6th. Wood has roughly half a million to 2 million uh, E, the E value. Take this with a grain of salt because we've got plywood. It's very difficult to find that. Normally it's for regular wood that's not in layers. But I just used an inter intermediate number of 1 here. We've got a ratio here of wood being roughly only a thirtieth the stiffness of steel so I went through and took one and a half and solve for X which is the thickness of the wood would have to be you cube that you want it to be, to be 30 so you solve here with logs 
you get 4.66, say a little under 5 millimeters. 6 millimeters is a quarter, so this is probably close to 3 sixteenths of an inch. And there's the goo layer. Ideally, you want something when it shears back and forth, you've got a lot of loss. And this is actually still, after being in there for how many years? 24 years, this has got still a lot of um, gooiness in the sense that you move this back and forth, you'll have a loss. So you want something that, when this is worked, it's actually going to heat up. So, they must make special elastomeric materials that are better for that. And for this particular application, the RTV actually worked pretty well. And taking this apart, this is amazing how well the sucker stuck together.